Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, let's get started. Does everybody have your Photoshop files up? Yes. Okay. We now need to turn those into HTML files. And Mary asked that I go over some of the, the Photoshop stuff just to make sure that we've got um, similar settings. Which ones did you want to see? The three boxes at the bottom, I have a left column, is that right? Yeah, that's the, the box. Here are the effects that I have. I've got a stroke around it, a gradient overlay, and a drop shadow. You can kind of see the effect here. It can look like anything. You can pick any gradient colors that you would like or whatever stroke you want. Um, looking back, I wish I had done a green stroke instead of a blue stroke. But that's okay, we'll be able to change that later. Yeah. Whatever color you want, whatever looks good with your design. Yeah, you, you, you may feel free to always play with the colors however you wish. Yeah. Asking about the the, um, the effects on news and events. I don't think there's any. I think the only thing I did there was just change the, the color. I sort of took the green that was there and just made it a little darker. And then the effects on the, um, on the slider text. These? Those. That one does have a drop shadow. And the drop shadow with that one... If you set the distance to two and the spread to zero, uh, the setting the spread to zero gives it a sharp, hard um, drop shadow. Whatever you want. I have 141, but I can change that if you need. I don't know what is, is 125, isn't that? I don't know, somewhere around there is fine. Just upper left, that's all I was going for as the angle. Any other questions? That was all. Okay. Why does it look any different, even though I just changed it a whole bunch? Did you have, yours didn't change? Oh, because I have the wrong <laughs> Now, you've got the same, or you've got different layer effects on your different boxes. Well, now I do, yeah. And so if you want to copy it. copy it, yeah, you can literally take the effects and alt drag them to other layers, and it will copy them over. Okay. If you, do you need to see that? Okay. This one's my left column layer. This one's my middle column box. I've got layer effects on it, but I'll get rid of all of them. So I just go down to my layer and um, throw the left box. Watch this. Here's my, this is my left box. Yep. This is my middle box, and I, I took all the effects off of it. Uh -huh. You can take the effects and you can drag it to another layer, and it just pulls it over there. Or you can alt-drag it, and it will copy it over to, to a layer. What's the difference between just dragging it and... When I, when I alt-drag it, it leaves it on the original and pulls a copy oh, off onto copy. the one. Otherwise, I'm picking it up and moving it, I taking see. it off of one and putting it on another. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now, this design is 
a pretty standard HTML. Can you think about how the divs are going to work in your HTML? Now you have to start thinking about how to translate this into HTML. And the big thing is, basically anywhere you would put a box, that's where a div is going to need to go. For example, we're going to need a div around the big logo area up at the top. We're going to need a div for the navigation bar. We're going to need one for the slider, one for each of these little guys, one for the footer, and probably one big div to contain it all. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over to Dreamweaver, set up a site, create an HTML file and a linked CSS file, and we're going to start building stuff. So I think everyone can probably handle that, but the process is I'm just going to create a new folder. What's the name of it? I don't know. I'm just going to call it mockup. That'll be fine. Yeah, sure. Ruminati, whatever that word means. Um, and in Dreamweaver, set up a new site. For that folder. Minati. Cool. Everyone cool with that? I haven't made you use Dreamweaver in a while. You didn't forget, did you? Of course. <laughs> so now it opens like create. Hmm? You should this the Dreamweaver now open with the create. Oh yeah, get rid of that thing. I hate that. Is some annoying thing to get you to. Queen of us. Yeah. <laughs> My, the folder I just created a folder on my desktop. I haven't, we don't have anything in it yet. Um, uh, you're going to need an images folder. Remember how to do that? You can uh, in your once you get it set up in your files panel. If you right click on that top level folder, you can create new subfolders underneath of it. We'll eventually do a, a, a works folder. We're not worried about it just yet. That's fine. The only thing that you're going to need to put in your work folder, and you've already submitted it, so I'm not worried about it, but you would normally put this PSD file in there. Um, you've already submitted it to uh, Moodle, or you're about to, so I want the PSD there, and I, I don't need a work folder off of this one. Uh, if you have it open in Photoshop, it won't, don't move it yet. Wait until we're done. Um, because Photoshop will let you drag this to somewhere else and then save it back where you originally had it. And you'll have two copies. And one will be updating and the one that you'll be submitting won't. So don't do that. Um, okay. In Dreamweaver, now I will make file new. I need a new blank HTML file. And then we'll save it as index. Well, why can't I get both of these at the same time? There we go. Now I can see CSS Designer and the Files panel. Why is that so hard to... I don't know. Okay. Um, I, that, I'm also going to need to make a CSS file. So if you remember that, once you create the index, uh, in the CSS designer panel, there's a little plus button under sources. That should be familiar to you. Create a new CSS file, I will call it styles.css and hit enter and yeah. Okay, so now I've got my blank canvas ready set up. How many divs am I going to need? Typically you need a container div to go around all of it. That'll be fine. One, two, three, seven, eight. I think eight, yeah. Somebody disagree? Seven? Don't forget the footer. Eight? We like eight? Okay. Now, not all of them need to be divs.
for example, the very top one can be header. The next one should probably be nav. We don't have a sidebar on this one. The next one is kind of for the slider. Are you in live view or design view? Oh, that Emmet thing? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> That's new and I haven't run across how to do it yet. Um, there is no slider tag in HTML, so that means you you have to use a div and give it an ID equal to slider. I now need those three boxes. Um, I would recommend this div ID equals um, first first box class equals box. And then I'll change the ID on the, the, the second one and third ones, third box. But I'll give them all the same class. That way I can just design one of them and apply the same style to all three at once. But then I can go into each one and make other subtle changes using the IDs. Oh man, now think about the nav bar. Well, I'll give you a minute to get this typed in. And just so you know, I could have done each one of these as div id equals header, div id equals nav, div id equals footer, but now that HTML actually has these header, nav, and footer tags, Google really likes it when you use those. Um, it's, it's expecting those those div replacements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once you have those in, now go over to your styles.css and write a CSS rule for each one. You don't have to put anything in the rule but you just have to have the rules there. So container, header, nav, uh, slider is a, it's that guy. First box, actually I'll do dot box, then the first box, second box, third box. and footer. Can you give a refresher as to why you're putting the hashtag in the dot before? Yeah, over here, typically, I, I sort of come from an older school of, of, of design where anytime you needed a box, you put an ID on it. And then HTML came out with these, these guys, and you don't really need that. Uh, quite as much anymore, but whenever you put an ID, the, whatever CSS rules you put in inside the the pound one, they will override any classes that happen to be applied to the same thing. So you can create sort of a hierarchy. If so if your ID says the color should be of your font should be blue and the class says it should be red, the ID always wins out. But it gives me. But you're also only allowed to have you're not allowed to reuse IDs on the page. So I've got to have a first, I can't use first box again. But I can do that with classes. And this makes a lot of sense. I want them all to have the same gradient, the same outline, the same font structure and all that kind of stuff. So I'll do all of that in dot box. 
and I can apply it to multiple elements. This one gives me control over this one single element on the page if I need it. I have to say, I have no idea if I'm gonna end up using all of these or not, but I usually go ahead and write a rule for each one just so that I can be sure I've got it. I can't, I can't split that. Let me know when you need the uh, HTML again. The HTML? Here you go. Is there anything under the um, footer on the uh, CSS? Footer. This one. My design view should look awful. Yeah, they're all basically stacked right on top of each other. Um, what I would recommend in order to make everything visible this will make all the divs which is what all these IDs and classes, they're applied to div tags. The header tag, the nav, the footer. I will give them an outline. Outline is different than border. Don't do border because when you do the widths of objects in HTML or in CSS, the border adds to the width. So in other words, if you're trying to, if you have a thousand pixel box, and you try to put two 500 pixel boxes inside of it, and you give each one a two pixel border, now those are 1,008 pixels wide. Outline doesn't contribute to the width of your design. Outline, they'll, they'll sort of overlap out, so they, they would still be two 500 boxes sitting inside of 1,000 box. I, I usually delete this line at the end. It's just there, there so that I can see where my divs are, but I usually don't actually keep those lines there. The other reason that if you've been doing this in design view that it's not showing up just yet is because in your HTML you have nothing between these tags. If you do control shift space, it will put in a non-breaking space. And then you'll be able to and then each box it just has one character in it, but it will expand out so you can actually see it in your design view. There you go. Ampersand the NBSP, non breaking space. Control shift space. We'll do that. I think it's command shift space on a Mac. But yeah, it's, it's similar. still writing it down. Because there's the eighth one is around the whole thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At least you have header. I have header. Nav. Nav. Div ID equals slider. Slider. First box, second box, third box. Third box and footer. footer. Then you have them. And there's a container around the whole thing. 
Right. And my styles. You still got seven divs up there showing the each row, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, then something must be wrong in your uh, HTML. Are you missing a slash div for one of them at the end, or a slash whatever it is? You need a semicolon at the end of them. It's in oh, it's ampersand N B S P semicolon. That's it. That's oh, that could do it too. No, yes. Um, <laughs> how did you get it so that the CSS is like like uh, up here? Yeah. Um, in your HTML, go over to the CSS designer panel. Gotcha. Under sources, click the plus button. You can. I don't, have you already created your CSS file? Uh, not, not enough okay. to flip the word. Yeah. Then create a new CSS file. It'll let you save it immediately, and then it's automatically linked. Okay. Cool. Save it as styles. Yeah. Go to view. Let's get rid of split vertically. And go into go into design. Get out of live. I think part of the problem you had extra um, clo closing delimiters on there. A little more above. Okay. That's good. Okay. So each one of these divs, these HTML constructs, each one's going to be a box. I can put stuff in them, I can I grab stuff from Photoshop, and really all it is now is I, I can go grab the images that I need, I, I, I just need to start thinking about borders and colors and stuff like that, but once, and, and this is going to mimic what your wireframe is. Every box in your wireframe, you could figure out div ID equals whatever that box is supposed to be. So. Yes, I'm going to use CSS to move it around, and we still need to create that three-column design in the middle. I'll make all that first. Here's how you center the whole thing on the page. We used the 960 grid system to make that original Photoshop file. I want to stick with 960 on the width of my site. Margin zero auto is that weird thing. If you remember from Web Design 1, that's the thing that centers it on the page. Um, margin is the space outside of a box when there's two numbers the first number in this case zero references the margin on the top and bottom of that box so that I'll just get rid of that margin auto takes whatever is left over margin now typically this box will be over to the left it takes all that space on the right splits it in half takes leaves half of it on the right and puts half of it on the left and that is how programmers think about centering stuff it's not how designers want to do it. I hate <laughs> this command. It took me months to figure out this command when I was researching CSS on my own and first starting to learn it. The next, and, and that should put your design center of the page 960 pixels wide. Did that work? Cool. You may have already had that if you're doing a template of some kind. Here you go. At least, is it not working? What should it have done? It should have uh, made your boxes all 960 wide. Yeah. Okay. Just have refresh to 960. Okay. Now, I'm not too worried about the heights of things. That's actually okay. Mostly the height of stuff we'll either get to in a little bit or it will be determined by whatever's inside of it. Um, 
So if I put this image in here and it's 200 pixels tall, that, that div will expand to 200 pixels tall. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, the thing that I need to figure out now is to get these three boxes here to all look the same. And what I set up for that is the dot box property. Now to get them all moving in the right direction to create that little three column layout, I'm gonna to need to do this width 33% float left. They're not getting rid of it. It's never going to go away, but there's this flex box thing that's flex. supposed to take the place of it. But it may not, because I also just read about another thing called CSS grids that's supposed to take the place of Flexbox that doesn't work yet. I think what's going to end up happening is that CSS will give us three or four, maybe even five different ways of doing layout. And every designer will be free to, free to choose whatever they want. Um, no, it's really annoying because it means there's going to be all kinds of crazy ways to do it. And, oh, and, yes. and CSS will divide into camps. I use floats. I use Flexbox. I use the grid system. And everybody will hate each other. And then there will be a pilot class for each. Oh, God. And, then, and also the validation. <laughs> It is still validated. It's still run. It's still regular CSS. There's not yeah, much. But what if the validation doesn't accept one and the other? Because oh, it won't. It won't for years. Used? The validators will will say that this is not part of the CSS two specification, but it exists in CSS three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's my design. It looks wrong. Well, I'd have to do thirty three point three 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 percent in order to get it to fill up perfectly. Um, but there's that little bit on the right, that's the footer, right? Do you remember that when you float stuff, like the footer tries to get up in the gaps between? Do you remember what the fix is? Uh, no? I'm not following because I don't have that. Mary? Oh, I thought you were... Say it again? Nope. I don't have that. Oh, what is it? It's like solid. Yeah. Okay. Something's missing on mine too. Missing? I don't have the, I don't have the two little lines. There's two little lines there. Is it clear? Is it is. Clear. clear. Do you remember what? Clear both. In this instance, we can just put clear left, um, but it could be either. Yeah, so we want our footer to be clear both. Yes, in the CSS. Here, let me show you. And then your footer should be on the bottom underneath of it. And then we'll just have to figure out something about this, uh, I don't have those this guy designs. in the middle. Styles file will ever show up in your HTML. Why? Tell me why. You're not linked to the CSS. I'm not linked to the CSS. That's why you could make all the changes to the CSS you want. It'll never show up. See, uh, Martha? Yeah. See, mine has the little links here. Yours was a new tab. That's how I knew that was happening. So your HTML was not linked to your CSS. Go into uh, CSS Designer, hit Sources. CSS Designer, plus attach existing. Now I'm going to link to it. Lots of little errors. Are we fixing things? Cheryl? Yes, she got it. Yeah. That's important. It says help. Yeah, go browse for it. Yeah, click on now. Double click on styles. You've done this before. Click OK. OK again. Now all your design stuff is coming through. It's in the third. Oh, you put it on. You put it in the class box on slider and first box. 
It should be on first, second, and third box. Yeah. Make sure that you do not have box on this one slider. Yeah. If you here, this this will probably be a bit uh, a little better on my screen at least, just because I have such low resolution. Does oh, that look blue? Uh, it's just the one that's selected at the moment. Oh. That's all. It's not. There's no design on that. Here we go. Oh, so how am I going to get rid of this? A tiny little thing on the end. Just go to that box. They're all being, we could, but I want them all to be the same width. I want them to be even. Can you overlap them? So you do. Mm, not, with, not with floating. So change the percentage to an actual pixels. Yes. Let's change it to 320 pixels instead of 33%. And it should fit, right? Yeah. Was, <laughs> you were overthinking it, weren't you? <laughs> so. There we go, now it fits perfect. And you fits on the cutter, right? Clear both. Otherwise it tries to wiggle its way up into the little gaps between your floated elements. Oh, I should save all. File save all. Now it's a matter of slicing things out of Photoshop and applying them in here. What I recommend that you usually do is grab anything that you're going to make an image tag first. What in here are we going to, as opposed to a background image. So what in here is going to be a, a, an IMG tag, and this would include anything that you would want to be able to click on, um, and what's going to be background images, what do you think? Sliders, little slider arrows. Yeah. Arrows Just the arrows, or you want the, I, I was planning on doing the whole thing as one giant JPEG. Just to make it easier, because other we have to. Oh, they would have to be their own. Yeah, because when you get slid, then it would take it with it. Yeah, we want the want the arrows to stay there. Okay, we can do that. So that's going to be three graphics. One, two, three. Yeah. What else? Yeah, this little guy right here. And one more. Sort of. Just this part, just this logo right here. So let's start there. Um, if I want to, if I want to do this, let me zoom in. I want to grab, where's my slice tool? The letter C will get you the slice tool. With this one, I can drag a little box around it. It's going to do some weird stuff. It's going to try and snap to the edges of it, but I have... I have a fading uh, shadow around it. What is that? It's either a drop shadow or an outer glow. Your yeah, it'll give you the crop tool. It'll be buried under the crop tool. I need this slice to be a little bit bigger than the image itself, so that you get all of the little fading drop shadows that are around it. I'll zoom in some more. Yeah, I want to make sure I get all the drop shadow. Now, if I make this my slice, that means that it's got to match up with the background. Yeah. What I would prefer to do is, it, is just make all of this around here completely transparent. We can do that. I just need to turn off my background folder. You might need to go through your Photoshop file and turn off different layers. But once you can see the checkerboard pattern and nothing but this header layer, that's what we'll export out as our um, as our image tag. Did that work? Uh, now I need to go grab my slice select tool. I think you guys probably remember this one. Then you can double click on the slice and give it a name. I'll call this one logo. 
If you need to at this point, you can also change the uh, dimensions if you want to get it a little bit more precise. Can you backtrack just a bit? Sure. Do you have the slice around it? Yeah. Okay. The slice tool is located under the crop tool. Hit the letter C. Cool. Grab the slice tool. And your slice needs to be a little bit bigger. It needs to account for the um, the fuzz that's around the drop shadow or the outer glow that's around your text. Thumbs up when you got it. slice tool, the slice select tool, and then you can double click on your slice and call it logo or something like that, because otherwise it's going to be whatever your file name is. Should we have those same numbers, uh, the 473X? No, because this is all, I, you, when you do it by hand, it's going to give you different numbers. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yours all, or all of yours is going to be placed slightly different places. Okay. So now, yeah, go ahead and say okay on that once you give it a name. We don't have to have the URL. Part. No, we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to output the um, image itself, and we'll do all the alt tag and stuff in Dreamweaver. So file, this is different now. They moved the save for web in this version of Photoshop. It's under export, save for web legacy. This should be somewhat familiar. File, export, save for web, legacy. It should pop up like this. Got it? Yeah, it's fine. So mine came up as GIF. Look how ugly that is. Isn't that horrendous? Did yours come up as a JPEG? If it was a JPEG, it's probably a solid white background. And the problem is that GIF and JPEG don't do transparency very well. You were right where you were I just clicked here. No, you're fine. Just click here. There you go. All you have to do is click on this cell. And have you guys played much with PNGs? Have you seen those on the web? The thing that PNGs were invented for was really nice transparency for things like this. So where I have the little outer glow here, you will actually be able to see what's underneath of it, whatever graphics are there. So in the upper right, change it your uh, preset to PNG24. You may have to make sure that you are clicked on this slice and then change your preset to PNG24. Yeah? Now, PNG does not give you too many options about how you can compress the files. Um, PNG just gives you sort of like one compression setting, and that's it. Um, it ha kind of handles it for you. The only thing that you really have access over is whether you change, save it as interlaced or not. And usually I suggest you check that just to see if it decreases your file size. It jumps mine from 17 kilobytes to 22 when I do that, so I'm going to leave that off. You do not need to embed the ICC color profile. Um, no. It's supposed to decrease the size. Sometimes. It sort of depends on how the image, how the color structure in the image works, but not always. Mine is increasing. Mine too. So I'm going to leave it turned off. And that, that's fine. Choose that. My outer glow disappears with my 
Does it have, oh, open up the, the outer glow one and change its mode from multiply to normal. I think it might be the blending mode that's on it. It might not be multiply, it's probably something else. If it's screen or overlay, it probably disappeared completely. That's what it was. Okay. I'm sure I was gonna solve that one for a second. <laughs> okay. I've got this one slice selected. It's now transparent PNG 24. I, oh, I gotta do this over here. Click save. And where's my folder? When you do this one, don't click save immediately again. Don't worry about the file name. Photoshop will rename this to whatever slice root you currently got. Set the format to images only. We don't need the HTML, we're making that. Settings default, slices, selected slices. It's only gonna output that one slice rather than all the rest of the stuff. So we're gonna kinda have to do this one at a time. And then click save. Make sure you're saving it in your Griminati folder or wherever it is, yeah. You don't want it in your images? I can't remember if it's gonna make an images folder or not. Photoshop does that. It did, yeah, if you save it to this top level because Photoshop will make an images folder. And if you save it in your images folder, you'll have images inside of images. Um, and that would be annoying. Really? <laughs> yeah. So we, we just, we didn't need interlaced or anything like that? Interlaced increased the file size for mine, so I didn't do that one. I'm gonna leave my background turned off so that I can get all of these graphics too. Will it have the green though? It will. I will have to turn off the background slider in order to get the transparency here in the upper uh, right and left of this. Yeah, whatever, whatever your slider thing is in here. So here's my slider stuff. I'm just gonna turn all of those off. There we go. Actually, you know what? I might wanna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put all the slider stuff in its own folder. I had it sort of out by itself. But now I have my left arrow and my right arrow in their own folders. I have the slider in its own folder. I'll call that slider left. I'll go over here. Well, I'm just gonna leave it up here on the screen and you, you can do it as you're ready. Do we do, the, do we do the two arrows at the same time? Yeah, we can. Since they're, they're gonna have the exact same colors in them, I'll be able to save these out as PNGs and, and I can do them right at the same time. I don't need to worry about. So, can you take both of them? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's what I did. Um, you can do slice, two, two different slices but put it into the same file? No, they, it will save them out as two separate files. Oh, right. Every slice becomes its own image. I like this little slice, but I mean. Is one, are they each in their own separate slices like this? No. That's bad. <laughs> Don't do that. Make them each their own. I'm calling them slider left and slider right. Wait, what's my width? Width and height of 59? That's annoying. It'd be nice if they were 
even 60. 59 by 59. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm making sure of is that both of these are the same height and width. Mine, I, apparently when I drew it in, I drew them as 59 instead of 60, but that's fine. Um, but then, even though you're clicking over one, you're taking both? No. Not yet. I'll show you that in a second. But do you have boxes of reach? Get those boxes down so that it is just what you need. Then we're going to do the save for web legacy thing again, and we can click on both of those slices at the same time and apply the same setting to both of them at, at once. But go ahead and, and take another minute to get that ready. Make sure that you've got your background of your slider turned off so it's not interfering. When you're slicing multiple things, you can shift or just slice. Just slice. Yeah. It'll let you have as many as you want. When we get to the next section. Yeah, hopefully you have a uh, hold of that. I have my slider folder subdivided into three folders. I've actually got the, the two arrows and then the slider itself. See why you organize things? <laughs> Oh, okay. Probably, then you can't go back and edit them. Um, but it don't hurt anything for this process. Because this, this is going to turn them into PNGs and flatten them anyway. So once I slice something, I can slice something else? Yes, keep slicing. Keep slicing. Do you remember that? When we did the, I made you do the little navigation bar in Photoshop a million years ago? You sliced one, and then you sliced the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Well, you are allowed to do that. Oh, I see. My, my arrow disappeared when I turned off my Then you turned off the wrong la layer. It was included in there. Yeah. Open that folder up. Okay, so oh, so you're turning off the entire folder. Okay. That's everything that's in there. So you've got to find the background layer itself, which I would be, I think, it's, I think that's part of it. There you go. Now they're all off by themselves. You might want to get rid of that. I don't know if that text is going to interfere with that. It might. OK. Now that you've got your slices, let's do save for web again. If you would like to learn a keyboard command, it's control, alt, shift, s. Ugh. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's all of them. How do you select both at the same time? That's a good question. Shift. Yep. Shift. Click and click. You, you can. I mean, you can just click on one, set it to PNG24, click the other one, set it to PNG24. Or you can click on one, then shift click on the other, and then it applies the same settings to both of them at the same time. It, it doesn't really matter. Since it is transparent, the outer doesn't really matter, right? Like, I don't have outer. To, like this box, um, as long as I capture all the bits. Like, I don't need it to be, like, flush up against it, right? Right. I can have um, a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah, that, it probably doesn't matter too much, but I, I like having my images as small as possible just because they're a lot easier to wrangle. Um, if you have, like, an inch of transparency down along the bottom, that could be annoying. Okay. So, so how do we know which one we're about to export? You, you do, you, we're exporting everything that's a slice. Yes. But we're only going to narrow it down to these two in the next step.
now these are the two that you have selected, change both to PNG 24. When we, when now when you save them, those will, because those are the two that are selected, those are the two that Photoshop will output. That's it. But we're, we're creating a file. Uh huh. Are there going to be two files, one mm -hmm. for each one? Because I gave them different names earlier. Right. Yeah, and if you forget to name them, then you just, they'll have like 960gs.psd, yeah. oh, whatever number slice this is. Um, so now all I need to do is click save. And all your settings should be there from the previous one, where you did images only and selected slices. That means it's only going to output those two. I'm still doing it where I can see my images folder. Don't go into your images folder. And don't, and if you... Please, dear God, don't go into the images folder inside your images folder and have it three levels deep. That's bad. When I go to save as does yours, it converts it to a, a GIF. That's okay. Photoshop actually doesn't use that at all. It uses whatever you put on the slice name. Oh, okay. What name? No, no name. Just ignore the file name completely. Let Photoshop do whatever it wants because it completely it. ignores. Just click save. Um, and we don't try to rename it for the file? Correct. Photoshop will use the name of whatever you put on the slice, and it, uh, it's just part of the operating system. There has to be a file name there, but Photoshop ignores it and does what you actually told it to do. And now, here's what my images folder looks like. Go look at yours. Make sure that you have those three graphics in there, and make sure you don't have like sub-image folders. If you do, just cut them and paste them into the right place. They're not showing up as thumbnails, but... But they're in there? That's fine. I can tell. Okay. The last one you need is the pro featured product one. So I think you guys can handle that now. Yeah, just this little guy right down here. Since it is a square, we don't need to do the translucent thing. Right. In fact, now that this one goes edge to edge, there's no transparency at all. Um, what's that? So by placing all your images here rather than using the original image, it helps set the uh, resolution to work better with a small image size. Parts of that are correct, yes. <laughs> we, we, you absolutely have to be concerned with the getting as small an image file size as possible. Um, right now, I think the average web page size is a megabyte and a half, and they take 30 seconds to render on a cell phone. Yeah, which is interminable. Um, you want to shoot for less than two seconds for everything to load. 500 kilobytes is the max that you should have per page right now. Um, that will not always be true. Sometimes when you get into um, JavaScript and, the, and analytics and things like that, they add a lot of code to track users. Um, but that means you, you have to make your website as teeny tiny as possible. Um, so that's part of what I'm trying to do. Okay, so let me see. I can make this guy, I can make it a GIF 256 colors at 15 kilobytes or a JPEG at 60% quality, just under four kilobytes. I'm gonna do that. PNG is probably going to be 50 kilobytes, 25 kilobytes. Yep, JPEG wins. I, I, was, I think I was trying to explain this. I didn't, uh, I didn't get very far. Because there's no transparency in here, there's no drop shadows, there's no glows, we don't need to worry about the PNG um, transparency stuff. Well, that's, a good uh, that's fine. Just go back in and change this and, and save it out. Go back into your images folder and delete the wrong one when you're done. So this is a regular plain image. Every pixel is used, no transparency. So you can, so for that, GIF or JPEG is best. Since this is a photograph, JPEG or photograph-ish type of thing, JPEG is better. If this was cartoon artwork flat color type of stuff, GIFs are usually better for that. So by medium high. I put mine at 60. Um, I find that that will work pretty well. You could probably go down a lot further. It kind of blurts, has to blur the fibers. Okay. So 
So my selection here for JPEG is high low medium. Click uh, medium. But then you can adjust the quality. That's how much compression there is. Well, you can't see it. It's down here. So let's look at it. Because uh, we're not space for Now, put that all the way down to zero quality. Do you see how it closed out a little bit? Okay. You see that square pattern on it? Yeah. That's what happens with JPEG compression when you put too much on it. Uh -huh. um, what I find is that almost all JPEG compression goes away when you um, go above 50. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, can you see it? To see all the squares, that's zero percent quality. It's a hundred percent compression. Yeah. The less I do, the the more it goes away. What I find is that if you go to fifty percent, you can't see the the squares anymore. Um, and that's just the JPEG algorithm. It divides it up into sixteen by sixteen squares. Sixty, I can see a lot of the the color again. And I'm only at four kilobytes. That's microscopic. So I will I will stick at four kilobytes. Uh -huh. Remember how I told you JPEGs? Every time you open a JPEG, it's different than the last time. Yeah, this is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now that you're back in Photoshop, Control S, save <laughs> all those slices in Photoshop. Let's drop those in Dreamweaver now. Now that we've been playing around with this. I'll put him in there. I'll put slider left in the slider, slider right in the slider, and featured product in the middle cell. I dragged them from the files panel. I know, panel. I know, but I don't even have them in my list. Uh, so files panel. Yeah, I know. Did that, right? In my Did I you hit the refresh button? Um, oh. Now open images. Oh, they're not there. They're in, they're somewhere else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, this, this one has styles.css, that one did not. If you go back one, it's a different folder. There's no styles here. Can you see your mouse? Yes. This is the. Yeah, it's in the documents on the drive. So. All you have to do, do you have, do you see it in your files panel? All you have to do is click and drag one, the little cursor will pop up, let go, and it puts it on the page for you. Oh, are you in live view or design view? Be in design view. Get in design. Yeah, live you can't edit the page. It's, it's supposed to be what it'll look like in the browser without, you know, Dreamweaver's little guides all over the screen. I think you're right.
Yeah, they should be there, shouldn't they? I made sure that mine were the exact same height. If yours are two different heights, they'll be off a little bit. Don't worry about it now. Okay. They just have little lopsided buttons. So, so what you're talking about is when I set it up that first time, as a, before I went When you were slicing it. Yeah. I have to make sure they're the same numbers. Yeah. So if you look at mine, um, see this line right here? This le I, this lets me know that they're along the exact same top line. Um, okay. uh, Photoshop thinks this is a slice and this is a slice, and then I made sure that they were both the same height. They're both 59 by 59. Right. So just pay attention to that next time. And the axes too, right? Not just how big they are, but where the but the axes yeah. on there. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, I guess I should put alt tags on these, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to... I forgot, Dreamweaver now by default turns the properties inspector off. It's under window properties. And this, if it's floating, if it's a window floating around like this, you can pick it up and dock it to the bottom of the screen. Does this kind of have spaces in it or not? It does not. Uh, the alts can be read like regular English. Because that is what is read out loud by a screen reader. View, split vertically, design view on top. You can check or uncheck both of these. You guys will probably prefer to have your code on the left hand side because then you can see it all. But our design is fairly horizontal, so. you have alt tags on everything so the validator doesn't yell at you. Wait, we have five minutes left in class? Crap. <laughs> All right. Um, let me demonstrate the last thing. Just watch me. I need to get all of this as sort of my background um, for things. Um, what I find ends up working the best is you slice a tiny little portion of your gradient like this, and I will call that background-gradient. And then I'm going to overwrite virtually everything I just did and create a gigantic, oh shoot, that's not going to be quite right. I need to create one giant slice of everything that's in the middle of the page. And unfortunately, I have to get rid of the ones I've already done. 
In order to do this right, I've got to set a column down the middle. Where's my yeah, midpoint? Oh, I use the slice select tool to click on them and, and delete them. But as soon as I drag, I draw over top of them, they'll they'll go away. I need to make sure that this slice is dead center. That there is the same amount of space here as there is here. Otherwise, this will be in the background, but it'll be shifted the wrong way. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna have to use math, and I hate that. Okay, we'll make it 1600 wide. Nine, how? Is a thousand tall? Is that what this is? I don't know. 1020, that's fine. I need my. So we don't need. Oh, crud, hold on. I gotta do math on this. We don't need the block? The block that just we need. Right. Which block? The block. Blob. Blob. Yeah, what about it? The yeah, that's in there. That's, that's on. I turned my background layers on. So, hold on. I need How wide is my image? Image image size 1920. 1920. I want the middle 1600. That means 320 is left over. I need 160 here and 160 here. Does that add up to 1920? Yes. It does? Okay. Question. Do you, do you uh, turn off the... Wow, that was really close. Let's see that you turn off something there, but you still have a container. Yeah. Because, well then, it's a layer in, in here somewhere you just need to turn on. But now what I'm going to do is... Here, this is my first one. This is the little gradient one. 256 colors should work. Does it work better as a PNG by any chance? No, not really. Ooh, a JPEG at 100% is only 1.6, and a GIF at 256 colors is 6.4, so I'll go with a JPEG, that's fine. Then this big one, is going to be just the background behind everything. And that means definitely needs to be at least a JPEG. 158 kilobytes. This is where I'm going to blow the bank on my, um, my file size, but this will be the biggest one. I don't need 100%. Let's go down to 50 and see what it looks like. 50 is not bad. Holy crap, it got it down to 30K? All right, this is working out better than I thought it would. Let me see what 40 does. And let me go back to 50. All right. I got you and you. So what's the gradient one for? I will show you. Oh. I'll save it. Got my files. Cool. In Dreamweaver, I'm going to go to CSS Designer. I need a... I need to add a body selector in the body I'm gonna to go to backgrounds maybe why is it not giving me anything oh uh, uncheck show set that shows me everything background my URL my file is going to be browse there he is images the big background it will be positioned dead center in the top. Center. Top. No? Why didn't you do it? <laughs> Where'd it go? It lost it for some odd reason. I've never seen it do that before. I'm ready to murder this thing. Freaking work. There we go. No, I'm actually placing it um, in the body. I'll give you the code here in just a second. Oh, 
I should probably tell it to not repeat. That would be nice. Background, repeat. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put the background, I'm going to put the gradient across the top. But it, it'll be behind the current one, but they match up on the edges, so it'll look like one seamless design. Actually, I can, I can cheat on this. You can just do background, and you add all of this. Center, top, no repeat. Let me see if that still works. It did not. You put an E at the end of background there, by the way. Background. There we go. That's the shorthand for it. The neat thing is you can just do comma and do it all over again. URL, images, because I need to have two of them. Um, left, top, repeat, X. I think this is gonna be right. We'll be done in just a second. Kind of seamlessly integrates together. If I kill this one, you'll see it. It's just going across and I'm putting the other one on top of it. Why is it putting it on these? Well, mine fades down into white here, so I don't really need to. You can put a background color if you want. Can you check it for like that. Oh, it was doing it to the wrong thing. It was doing it to my boxes. That's why it's... That's why my code wasn't working. There we go. So that's what it should look like. Yes. If And then the last thing is if I turn off the divs, or the, the outline, I'll bring it back here in a second. It's starting... It's actually kind of lining up. I need to move this over a bit, but... I've got my structure in here, but I can do that. <laughs> 